In this video, we're going to create a filter function output in Excel where the column to filter on is controlled by a drop down selection menu, and then the criteria values for that column are controlled by checkbox selections. So, what you see here is a preview of what we're going to create today. To the left, I have a data set of loan records in a table. Over here is my filter output results area. You can see right now it's currently set to location as the column to filter on, but I have options to filter by the loan type. So over here I have the criteria for whatever column is selected. So if I change this to loan type, you can see this automatically updates with values to filter on that are specific to this column and I can filter on whatever I like based on whatever column is selected. What this also does is it does a sort based on whatever column is selected here. So the type is selected so right now it does a primary sort based on the loan type and a secondary sort based on the other criteria column. If I switch this to location it does a primary sort by branch location and a secondary sort by the loan type. So I just want to begin by saying that you either have to have Office 365 or Excel 2021 for this to work because we're using the filter function. So the first thing we want to do is make sure we save our workbook as a macro enabled workbook. So I'm going to go to File, Save, and select the second option here for macro enabled workbook. Second thing is we want to make sure this developer ribbon is visible. If it's not visible after saving as a macro workbook, you may need to go to file and options and then customize ribbon and make sure this developer ribbon box is checked and click OK. So the next thing we want to do is convert our data set that we want to filter on to a table. And the reason is this will just make inputting the formula so much easier. So I'm going to click anywhere in this table and hit Control and T. This Create Table box will appear. Just click OK and now it's a table. So now we're going to add a drop down menu based on our column criteria headers. So to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to insert the unique formula anywhere to the right. Click in my first criteria column, click OK. Since the second criteria column is directly to the right, I'm just going to drag this to the right. I'm going to copy and paste over this as values, get rid of these zeros here, and we just have our unique values for each of our two criteria columns. So now I'm going to click in this cell where I want my drop down menu. I'm going to go up to data and then data validation, click on list, click in this source box and grab these headers here. Click OK. So for this to work, the values here in this drop down menu must be the same as the headers here and here. So now what we're going to do is select this first range of values and create a named range that is the same as this header and the value in this drop down menu. So to do that I'm going to select this range, hit control and F3, click new, make sure that that range is the range referenced down here it is. So I'm going to call this location. It has to be the same as this header and this value here. Click OK. So I'm going to hit new one more time. I'm going to name this second range. So I'm going to go down here, select this, and select this second range. Call this type. So we want something dynamic here that automatically pulls these values based on whatever option is selected here. So to do that we're going to insert the indirect function and when you insert 
a cell reference that contains a named range with the indirect, it's going to pull back all of the values in that named range. So if I reference this cell, hit enter, you can see it refers to all of the values in that named range. We change that to type, returns all the values from the typed named range. So now what we want to do is insert checkboxes to the right of these values. So I'm going to go up to the developer ribbon, go to insert, click this checkbox icon. I'm going to click where I want it in the cell. Just going to drag it. I'm going to click in this box here and then hit the end key and backspace to get rid of this text and then I'm gonna resize this so that it's about that size with just a little space left over and decrease the size of the column Now I'm gonna click in the cell to the right of it and hit the arrow key to select the cell that it's in and then hold down the shift key while hitting the down arrow two times and then I'm gonna hit control and D to copy it down. Now what we need to do at this point is link the checkbox to the cell it's in. So I'm gonna right click on the first one go to format control this control ribbon should be the default under cell link I'm gonna type the cell reference of the cell it's in which is K2 gonna do the same for these other cells this is K3 click OK K4 so now to the right we're gonna add an if condition so if a checkbox is checked it has a value of true so we're gonna check to see if, if I can type here k2 is equal to true if it is we want to pull back this value to the left if it's false or unchecked we don't want to pull back anything so I'm gonna drag this down and you can see we have dynamic outputs linked to these checkboxes. So these cells here are what's going to feed into our filter function eventually. So now at this point we are ready. Well, let me back up for a sec. If you don't want this visible, you can change the shading of the font to a lighter shade so that it doesn't show up. You may or may not want that to be visible. So now we're ready to input our formula. So I'm going to copy this row of headers here and just add it somewhere down here as values. Add borders and shade. So we're going to insert the filter function. So the first input is the array we want to filter on. Since we have a table created here, we can start typing the table name. If you didn't rename it, it should just be the generic word table and a number. So I just start typing table and hit tab. There is my table. So the second input is our criteria column or columns and the criteria for those columns. So before I sync all of this up here, I want to show you what the syntax would look like normally for a table column. So again, I'm going to start typing the word table, hit tab. To get to the column I want to filter on, I'm going to add a opening bracket and as soon as I do that for a table it shows all of the column values. So right now H2 is set to type so I'm going to select type, add a closing bracket and then equals to my criteria. Well we'll just link it to this cell for now auto. When I hit enter you can see it is linked to this checkbox 
but it is not linked to the location which changes this to branch so we need something dynamic in the second argument here so again we're going to use indirect we're going to refer to our table and column but we need to enclose that in quotes within our indirect function so that's what we'll do so we have table one opening bracket I'm gonna end the double quote here because at this point we want to link this to cell h2 so we're gonna use an and symbol to join it to h2 another and symbol to join it back open back up our double quote closing bracket closing double quote closing parentheses because we're at the end of our indirect and then we're gonna set this equal to our criteria cell so I hit enter the cell is linked and now the column is linked as well so now it's filtering on branch so I can toggle back and forth between the two now we want to add these other two criteria cells so what we need to do at this point is enclose this in parentheses so we have that so I'm gonna hit control C highlight it hit control C to copy it add a plus paste it in there all we're changing here is our criteria value add another plus change this to our last criteria cell add a closing parentheses so now we have all of these cells linked to both the checkboxes and the drop down so the final thing we want to do here is add a sort order based on whatever is selected here so if location is selected we want to first sort by location and second by type and just the opposite if type is selected so I'm going to nest this inside the sort function the first input is the array we want to sort we already have that that is the output of our filter so I'm going to hit comma then we have the columns we want to sort by so since we have a condition here we need to add another if statement we want to check to see if h2 is equal to location then we want to sort first by column three then by column four so since we have multiple numbers here we have an array of numbers we need to enclose this in curly brackets so we have three comma four closing bracket curly bracket our value of false we have first sort by column four then by column three and our closing parentheses so now we have location selected so it's doing a primary sort by branch and a secondary sort by loan type if I flip this to type it's doing a primary sort by loan type and then a secondary sort by location well that is all for now thanks for watching